Thank you for joining our broadcast today at City Life Church. We would love to hear how God is using this ministry to change your life. So please take a moment to send us your story at info at citylifechurch.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially to help us to bring God's word to other people. You can go to our website at citylifechurch.cc to find the giving options that work best for you. We've got an encouraging word for you, and we pray that you lean in and engage as we head into the auditorium for today's message. Come on, we do that good for everybody else. This one's for Jesus. What is up, City Life? I'm so glad to be with you tonight. I'm so glad to be out of Minnesota. And uh, it's, uh, it is awesome uh, in Minnesota for other people right now. But I'm winning being here in Tampa. How many of you guys love your pastors? You got the greatest pastors in the world. And uh, you can be seated. I often say that uh, you know, pastors are God's gift to the church, but the church is God's gift to the world. And so the next time somebody asks you, well, who do you think you are, God's gift to the world? Say, well, yes, actually, I do think I'm God's gift to the world. But you have amazing pastors. God could have given them to anybody, and they would have been a blessing, but God gave them to you. And every morning, you ought to wake up and blow God a kiss and thank him for it. Amen. And so, hey, let's just pray for your pastors real quick. We just stretch forth your hand to them. We're going to pray a blessing over them. How many of you guys pray for your pastors, right? Pray for your pastors. Pray for their families. So let's do that real quick. Father, we just thank you for Pastor Tony. Lord, we thank you for Pastor Casey. And Lord, we thank you for their amazing family. We thank you for the gifts and the talent and the ability that's on their life. Thank you for the vision, God, that you have given them for this amazing ministry, city life. And Father, we bless them. We ask that everything they put their hand to would prosper. Continue to watch over them and protect them. Lead them, guide them, and direct them. Continue to give them the desires of their heart heart, that all of their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren, all of them will be blessed, saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, be multi-millionaires. And Father, I pray the blessing and the favor of God be upon them in Jesus' name. Somebody say, if you like that, say, I receive that for my life too. I receive that. I'll claim that for me too. That's pretty good. Amen. And so uh, I'm thrilled that uh, you guys have such a great church. You have such amazing pastors. This is a great church too. It's a church full of grace and truth uh, because, you know, grace lets people belong, but only truth sets people free. You know, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And uh, it's amazing. It's amazing to see what God has done and what God continues to do. We watch you guys from Minnesota, and we just admire the vision that God has given your pastors. Well, um, I want to I wanna pray for you real quick, and I want you guys to pray for me. I typically have my, my, one of my kids come up and pray for me, uh, but they're not here. Thank God tonight. I'm just with my wife. But... Uh, I'm going to pray for you. Would you pray for me real quick? Father, I thank you for the body of Christ. I bless all those watching online. Lord, I thank you for the campuses. Lord, I thank you for the vision of this house. Lord, bless this word. Let it be salt and let it be light. In Jesus' name, amen. Now look at somebody real quick. Just look at them and say, I prophesy. You're going to lose 10 pounds before this sermon's over tonight. Somebody say, I received that word. I received, that's a word from God. Somebody online receives that right now. Well, um, hey, I just got some things on my heart that the Lord, uh, you know, just impressed upon me to share with you guys. And, uh, you know, it's been a challenging uh, year that we've just come out of, 2020, and now we're in 2021. How many of you are believing for new things this year? God's got a plan, a vision for your life. And, and so, uh, you know, I had just several, several months ago just felt like I was in a season of just dryness, felt like I was in a season of, you know, just just feeling tired, feeling weary. Uh, and, and that's happened to me, you know, off and on. Uh, all the parents in here know what I'm talking about, right? And you just, you know, there's seasons of your life where you're just amped and you're ready to go. And there's other seasons where you just felt like your soul needed to be restored. You know, even David said that in Psalms 23 and 3 says that he restoreth my soul. And I can always tell when I need my soul to be restored, when I find myself in a place where, you know, I'm not laughing, 
because I love to laugh and I'm in a place where I feel like I can't cry, where my emotions just become seared. And, and I've been in that place before. It's not like I, I didn't love God. It's not like I wanted to walk away from the ministry. It's not that I wasn't passionate about my family, my marriage and my kids and all that God had called me to do, but I just felt like my soul needed to be restored. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just find yourself in those moments where your soul needs to be restored. I remember Pastor Tony and I went with some pastor friends, um, uh, I think it was just about uh, two years ago, and we we got away and just got the chance to pray and connect and just get your soul to be restored. And all the parents know what I'm talking about because in parenting, you know, kids kids just want to own your soul. <laughs> you know, like they want to own every minute of your day and your life, and you just. That's why Pastor Joanne and I, you know, we, we get away without the kids, you know, because kids stands for keeping intimacy at a distance successfully. That's what kids stands for. That's why they call them kids. And so there's moments when we just got to get away from the kids. And, uh, you know, we actually have a, I think we have a picture of the kids. I think they, they may have brought a picture they can put up maybe of our family. We do have eight kids and it's, and they're, they're amazing. And um, we have... Let's see, we have uh, 15, we have 15 year old and a 13 year old, or 12, he's 12, he's gonna be 13. 10, oh there they are, 10, um, uh, eight, (laughs) six, uh, I'm messing up, four, I think three, and then two twins. I'm going to learn their names next, but that's the ages. <laughs> and, um, you know, pray for Pastor Joanne. She's an amazing mom. Give her a big God bless you. She's definitely going to heaven no matter what she's in. And the reality is you can't become what God's called you to be by yourself. You need your family and you need the family of God. How many of you are thankful for the family of God? You're thankful for your church thankful for your pastors, your leaders, your team, and, and you're not going to reach the goals that God has called you to reach by yourself. You know, the, uh, I, I read a recent stat that says uh, from the Mayo Clinic that the average family spends 90 seconds together a day. 90 seconds in one room, uh, under the same roof, not on their phones, connecting together a day. Well, you know, I'm not an absentee father. You don't have to leave home to be absent. You know, you can be right in the house and be absent. You know, we go out to eat. We're, we're all on our cell phones. We're alone together. And, you know, very seldom are we sitting, taking the time to talk about it. I, I read just a recent stat from Newsweek says that the average teenager spends seven and a half hours a day on their phone. That's, that's nine 24-hour days a month. Baby boomers aren't much, you know, we're not really not far behind there. You know, we're, our, our Gen X, we're five to five and a half hours. And it's not that, you know, we, we, we shouldn't have a phone. You know, I'm not giving up my phone and moving out into the woods and start making my own clothes. I'm not doing that. But, but it's what are we looking at? You know, what are we putting our focus on? What are we putting our attention on? And, you know, I think it's important, you know, now more than ever before to engage our kids, to spend time and make the time with our spouse, to make that time, to make it a priority, because the only thing you can take to heaven with you is your children. Come on, amen about it. And I, and I get it. It can be hard challenging kids, correcting kids, disciplining kids, parenting. You know, sometimes I honestly just feel like a small-time mob boss. <laughs> you know, I'm like, honey, you better do what I said, because it would be terrible <laughs> if something was to happen to Mr. Teddy. If he was to just like disappear. I get it. It can be, it can be difficult. It can be challenging. I mean, just coming in the house. Sometimes I just want to drive around and not come in the house because just coming in the house is like, I got to hold a press conference. Every time I come in the house, yes, Alexander, no, we're not going to do that. Yes, Isabella, I answered that question yesterday. Nicholas down here, no, Liliana. It's like you literally hold a press conference every time you come in the house. And you, go, you have to come up with systems, different ways and strategies, you know, how you're going to parent because, you know, as you get more kids and life gets older, it's different. You know, having kids at 42 is different from having kids in your 20s. It's different. It's not the same. You know, I've had to come up with strategies. Like, I, I have a laser pointer. 
If you're taking notes, you should write this down. I'm about to save your life. I bought a laser pointer, and this is how we... I'm responsible to clean the house every night. That's my responsibility. I, I make sure the house is clean every night. And I got a laser pointer because they can't see. They can't see. Pick the trash up. What? What? I don't see it. Uh, where? I don't see, I don't see it. So I got a laser pointer. You see that over there? Put that in the trash over there. You see this here? Put that over there. You see, hey, hey, you see that shoe? Put that shoe over there. So I can live. Because parenting at 42 is different from parenting in your 20s. You know, when you're in your 20s, you have a newborn, you get on the ground, you're playing with them, wrestling. At 42, you're like, hey. <laughs> hey, daddy loves y'all. So you have to come up with systems and strategies about how you're going to make it. Come on, can I get an amen about it? And it's challenging, it's difficult. You know, I watch people, they don't, they're not married, they wanna get married, they're like, we wanna get married, we, we wanna get married. I'm like, well, what do y'all, what's your plan for when you have a disagreement? Oh, we don't disagree. <laughs> okay, okay. You know, and see, in Minnesota, we're known as the land of 10,000 lakes. So we have all these lakes, you know, and, and you can always tell when somebody comes, uh, you know, it's their first time, they're going out on the water and they don't have a, a jacket. And you're like, you should get a jacket, you know, and they're like, oh, it's fine out here. It's nice. And you're like, yeah, but it's different on, on the lake, you know, and they're like, why is it different? And it's because like, there's nothing blocking the wind. You've got stuff blocking the wind here. When you get out there, it's totally different. It's like, you know, watching people, they're not married. They want to get married. We want to get married. We want to get married. We just want to get married. I'm not saying you shouldn't get married, but just on behalf of all the married people in here, let me let you know. It's windy out here. We want to have kids. We just want to have them. We just want to, we just want to have them. Go on. Get them. I'm not saying you shouldn't have them, but just on behalf of somebody who has a bunch of kids, let me let you know. It's windy out here. It's different because there's nothing blocking the winds. And when you get out there in the wind and the storm, you can forget what God told you. You can forget the plan and the promise and the purpose that God spoke over your life. Come on, can I get an amen on that? We've all made mistakes, you know. The, the, the Bible says man is but a few days and full of trouble. We've all blown it. Everybody knows how to parent till they're a parent. Everybody knows how to run a business till they have an opportunity to run a business. Everybody knows how to be married till they're married. How many people know that life will make you give disclaimers? You know, when you're young, you're like, I'll never. There's no way. And you get older, you're like, as far as I know. <laughs> Best I can remember, they wouldn't. Because life has taught you. And, uh, you know, we've all made mistakes. I remember we were first-time parents, and um, my family's from the Bahamas. And so we had flown from Minnesota to Orlando, and we were going to get on one of those little, what they call a puddle jumper, those little prop planes to go over to Nassau. And so we got down there. We're all the, the first-time parents. You know, you can always tell a first-time parent because they got everything you don't need. They got the giant this and wipe warmers and all the stuff that you just, you think you need that you don't need. And so we get out there on the tarmac. We got the bags, the carry-on, the giant stroller and everything. And we get out there and Joanne goes, I got to go to the restroom real quick. And I said, okay, well, you go to the restroom. I'll put everything on a plane. And and and, and so I'm giving them the stroller, giving them the bags, carry-on and everything. And so she comes back and she goes, where's Alexander? And I said, you have Alexander. She goes, I don't have Alexander. Oh my gosh, you folded him up in the stroller. And I did, I didn't know he was in there. And that Eddie Bauer stroller, it had like a canopy over it. And you can, you just turn the handle and it just folds up. They were getting ready to put him under the plane. People are looking at us like, this kid's not gonna make it. This kid doesn't stand a chance. So we've all made mistakes. But success is born out of failure, amen? And you just gotta learn to be honest with yourself. Just learn to be honest because God's never intimidated by your mistakes. But our propensity to avoid the issue stops up our life. See, the secret to deliverance is even when you're wrong, just run to God. God's never intimidated by your mistakes, but we can, we can destroy our, our purpose and our destiny hiding in the bushes of excuses. 
And when you can just become honest with God and say, God, this is what I'm dealing with. This is what I'm going through. Because God's never intimidated by it. And you just go to God and say, God, I'm dealing with this. Because God already knows you're dealing with it. He already knows you're struggling with it. He already knows that, that, that you're being tempted with that. He already knows that this is a difficulty for you. And you just go to him and say, God, I need your help. It's a wonderful thing, even in marriage, when you can just be honest with each other. We can just get to the place where you can just be honest and say, this is what's going on. And, and it has pulled Joanne and I out of the crazy cycle so many times because, you know, you get in the crazy cycle and like, well, well, why did you do this? Well, you do this. Next thing you know is you're, you're arguing. And now we just learn to stop all that and just be honest. She'll come to me and say, why did you leave this much milk left in the container? Uh... I don't know. I have, I think if I drink it all, I feel like a slob and a glutton. So if I leave just a little bit, it makes me feel better about myself. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have a problem. I need you to pray for me. How come you can't put a new roll of toilet paper on the roll? You're 42 years old. My God, what is wrong with you? I don't, I don't know. I think I'm too lazy to get up and go in the other room. And so if I leave just a little bit, it becomes somebody else's problem. And that way I don't feel guilty about it. I don't know what's wrong with me. I have a problem. I need you to pray for me. See, nobody wants to be judged by any one moment of their life. Nobody. You know, raw eggs taste bad by themselves. So does flour. So does baking powder. You know, but when you mix it all together, it can create some new, something wonderful. See, all of us have fallen down. All of us have made mistakes. We have eight kids. Uh, you know, uh, some of them are walking. You know, two of them, them aren't. But all of them will fall learning to walk hundreds of times. And they never once think walking's not for me. They never once think, well, this isn't for me. Why would you think because you made a mistake and you fell that, that this isn't for you, that Christianity is not for you, that God's not for you, that the plan and the purpose that God has for your life, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. See, falling sometimes is a, is a part of the process and learning to walk. My daughter Liliana, if she fell, I wouldn't say, you know what, Liliana, you're not serious about walking. And until you get serious, you just sit there and you think about it. I would never do that. What would I say? Come on, you can do it. Come on, get back up again. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And we, we, do, we learn that about every, every part of our life except our walk with God. If you've fallen down, just get back up again. Just get back up again. I read a recent stat that, and I didn't know this, but the video game industry massively outsells the movie industry. I didn't know that. I, it, it's not even close the video game industry is massively larger than the movie industry. I didn't even know it. And so I read this study uh, out of the Harvard Business Journal, and they were saying, you know, some suggestions as to uh, the survey they did as to why the video game industry was so much more popular or had so much more money than the movie industry. And they were saying, well, it's addictive behaviors, or it's this world or that world, or all kinds of things. And, and when they polled all these people, the number one response why people said they preferred video games over movies was, was this one response. They said at the end of of every video game, it asks you a question. Do you want to try again? And the fact that you could make a mistake and not be a mistake, the fact that your life was not uh, defined by one moment or one mistake, because how many of you have blown it? Come on, how many of you have made a mistake? You better say amen about that or I'm coming to your family reunion. Come on, right? We've all made mistakes, but, but none of us want to be defined by the worst moment of our life. And if you're going through something right now and you feel like your life is being defined by that, if you stop, it will be. Judas betrayed the Lord and, in, and, and then he stopped and in doing so built a monument to his mistake. And he's known as the man that betrayed the Lord. But Peter also betrayed the Lord. Peter also betrayed him, but he didn't stop. He was there at the day of Pentecost. Come on, somebody. He ended up helping birth the New Testament church. And what was once the book of his life, I betrayed the Lord, moved from the book to the chapter, to the paragraph, to the sentence. And now it's just a part of his narrative. I'm telling you, if you stop, you will build a monument to that mistake. 
If you keep going, what you think is the book of your life, my life is defined by this bad moment. If, if you keep going, it will move from the book of your life to the chapter, to the paragraph, to the sentence, and God will add it to the recipe of your life and the things that the enemy intended for bad, God will turn it around for the good. Come on, amen. And you have to trust that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Not just the good things, but all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord, who are called according to his purpose. Because when God heals you, he leaves the medicine inside of you to heal someone else. And if you want to know what you're called to heal, look what God has, has healed you of. See, as long as you're in pain, pain makes you selfish. Pain makes you look inward. Have you ever been to the ER? You ever been to the ER? You go to the ER, you're, you're thinking about you. You're not, I was here before them. I was here before that person. You're not like, oh, I, I go to City Life. You go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you go. I'll just sit here and bleed. You go, go right ahead. You're, it makes you look inward. As long as you're in pain, you're selfish. That's why you've got to go to God and say, God, heal me. So that I can look outward, so that I can help someone else. Am I helping anybody in here? And we're not going to be perfect. You know, we're not perfect dads, but we can be present. We can be present. We can be there. If you're in here right now, you're a grandparent, would you just stand? Just stand up if you're a grandparent. I want to pray for you. All the grandparents, just stand. Do you know that if children have, or teenagers, I will say, have a relationship with their grandparents, there's almost a 0% chance of suicide? Did you know that? Almost a 0% chance of suicide. Do you know why? Because the people that are standing right now are a, they are the embodiment of the agape, unconditional love of God to teenagers. They, grandparents are terrible at discipline. You don't have to say amen. They model unconditional love. And sometimes our kids don't need more medication. Maybe they need a two-hour phone call with grandmom and granddad. Maybe they need to go spend the weekend with their grandparents. And it could do more to heal their soul. Oh, come on. And all of them have a dream for their family and their grandchildren. Would you just stretch forth your hand to one of them? We're going to pray a blessing over them right now. Father, right, right now, in Jesus' name, we bless those grandparents that are standing online. We bless those that are in this room. And we declare destiny over their life, that the best days of their life are in front of them, that their children, their grandchildren, and their great-grandchildren will all be saved, that they'll all be filled with the Holy Ghost. Father, that the plans and the purposes and the prophecies that you spoke over their life will come to fruition and Lord that you would give them a rhema word to heal their families in Jesus name everybody say amen, amen. come on give God praise for it you can you can be seated because like I said when God heals you he leaves the medicine inside of you to heal someone else so you have to learn how to minister from your from your scars and not your open wounds the father healed Jesus is his wounds, but he didn't heal his scars. We want, we want the father, we want God to heal our scars, but he's not going to heal your scars. He'll heal the wound, but not the scar because your scar is a testimony of what God took you through and you made it. In fact, when you see Jesus, you will know him by the nail prints in his hands. And if our savior is willing to be identified by his scars, maybe we should be willing to be identified by ours. And you will forever feel like a victim because of what you went through. And you will never be able to reason why God took you through what you went through until you show somebody your scar. And they go, well, if you went through and you made it, then maybe I can make it too. And now you turn misery into ministry and pain into praise. And now you can reason why God took you through that, why God let you go through that. It was for somebody's healing. Because you're all called to be healers. Somebody say, I received that for my life right now. You're all called to be healers. And how you become a healer is you move in the gift of compassion. Compassion knows all the answers. The moment you're full of compassion, you have the right answer. And you're able to heal people. The Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. And he healed them. How many of you would love to heal your marriage? How many of you would love to heal your family? Do you know that you can heal with words? You could go home tonight and say something to your spouse and just heal them. You could go home tonight and say something to your children and just heal them. That's why if anyone was ever bullied, 
most demonic prophecies are very short. Most demonic prophecies are short. They're typically one word spoken over your life over and over and over and over and over again. You're stupid. You're a loser. You're a failure. You're ugly. These are demonic prophecies and they are spoken over our children in schools all the time. That's why we have to put a word against a word. When the enemy opens his mouth, we need to open ours and declare you are fearfully and marvelously made. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. Everything about you is perfect. The, the color of your skin is perfect. The texture of your hair is perfect. Everything about you. God loves the sound of your voice inflection. He loves it when you sing. He loves the color of your eyes. Your body type is perfect. Everything about you is wonderful. And you have to speak that and prophesy that and declare that over, their, over your children. Learn to prophesy over your children because when you prophesy over them, you literally shape their identity. You shape their identity. And that's what Satan wants to do every day when he sends them to school is shape their identity. Have you ever received a prophecy? When you receive a prophecy, you immediately start trying to live it out. Somebody says, you're going to be a missionary. You go home and start Googling missions trips. You go home and start looking. You're looking at this, looking at that. Because it begins to shape your identity. That's why you as a parent have to prophesy over your child. You have to learn. Oh, God, am I helping anybody? You have to speak prophecies over your children. One of the greatest gifts you can give your child is a prophecy. I gave all my children prophecies on Christmas. On Father's Day, I give all of my family gifts and I give them a prophecy because it helps shape their identity. You'd be shocked at the men and women that are grown in this room that never received a prophetic word from their parent. You are the minister in that house. Pray over your children. And sometimes prayer can be, be boring and like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? And, and, and I've got little kids. And I, it's not always super awesome and spiritual. Sometimes it's like, quit farting. We're praying. <laughs> I understand that there are moments when it's not wonderful. But you have to learn to teach them to pray. You have to make prayer fun. If you don't like praying, your children won't like praying. And your children will pray like you. If you want to know what you sound like praying, ask your children to pray. Do you pray things like, Lord, we just ask and we, put, and we, just, we just ask you to do Or you declare. Right now, I just declare healing right now in the name of Jesus over my family. I just declare that they're going to be. Do you, your children, will, they will pray like you pray. And, and, if, and teach your children to prophesy over each other. It will keep down sibling rivalry. As they grow up, prophesy over each other. Prophesy over, over your brother. Prophesy over your sister. You're, if you're in our home, you're not allowed to say to your dear sister, you're stupid, and then say, I'm sorry. Sorry doesn't fix that. You now, you, you have to reverse that demonic prophecy with a godly prophecy. <laughs> prophecy, prophecy, profess what you see. Speak over your children what you see when you look at them. Make prayer time fun. We do this thing in our house called 30 Second Preach where they all run around the house and they have to grab an item and they have to bring it in the living room and preach on it for 30 seconds. <laughs> preach on it. Come on, everybody's going to preach. I'm not the only preacher in this house. Do it with your team. Everybody, just get, get, go run, around the, run around and get something. Bring it in. I don't, whatever it is. It could be a, a slinky. Get a slinky. And okay. Um, I'll hold it. And you, you run out there. You run out there with it and then you let go. And it comes back. And, and this is an example of, of, of God that no matter how far you go from God, the minute you decide to let go and surrender, you can come right back to him. Go out and get a mixer and, and put it and say it's a mixer. The, the, the word wasn't mixed with faith. So it didn't benefit them. Whatever it is, you've got to learn to make the God moments fun in your world. Pray, go on, get a, get a big map and put it in your living room and then go on Google Maps and go, go zoom in on Washington, D.C. on Google Maps and pray for government leaders and then say, what's your favorite restaurant? Oh, let's go in there. We're going to zoom in. We're going to pray for all those that, all the servers and the management of that. We're going we're gonna to zoom in on City Life. We're going to pray for our church right now. And every time you pray for it, put a pin on the map and make, make prayer fun for your children. Make, make the God moments wonderful. Get a, get a, a light on your, your head, one of, those, one of those bands with a light on. Turn off all the lights and watch how you trip over things and then turn the light on and say how God's word is a lamp under my feet and a light under my path. Teacher, you've got to get involved in teaching your children the word of God. You've got to get involved in pastoring your children and your family and make it fun. Make it engaging. If it's boring to you, it's probably going to be boring to them. Is this helping anybody? Because I feel like I'm killing it right now, honestly. <laughs> 
I have amazing self-esteem, just so you know. Like when I got out, I looked in the mirror, I was like, you're bad, you're awesome. Psst, you can do anything. I was like. <laughs> Make it fun, whether it's a 30-second preach, a 60-second preach, a, a map of prayer. Teach your children how to handle offense. Because offense is witchcraft. Offense is witchcraft. You got to learn how to handle offense and learn how to let things go. One of the Greek words for forgiveness literally means to exhale. It means to, whew, means to get it out of you. Because as long as you say, well, I'll never forgive them until they, then you put the authority for your healing in the hands of somebody else. And what if they never? That's too much authority to give somebody. You got to learn to handle offense. Teach your children how to handle offense. Teach them how to handle it. Learn how to get that out of them. Because forgiveness is a gift you give yourself. So they don't start operating in a spirit of witchcraft. Anytime I'm going to be moody or slam doors or give you the silent treatment or ignore you because I don't like the way you acted. And so I am going to change my behavior to try to manipulate your behavior so that you act the way I want you to act. That's called manipulation. And the Bible says that manipulation is as the spirit of witchcraft. You might as well be sticking pens in a doll. And then we don't realize it, but as, as a husband and wife, we start doing that. And then our kids grow up and they start observing that. And we end up raising little witches that learn how to manipulate at five and seven and eight. And so we have to teach them forgiveness. We have to teach them love and grace and healing and restoration. Because you can never be offended by someone you pray for regularly. And we tell our children, you know, hey, well, this person offended me. Don't you never talk to that person again? We don't teach them work. We say, well, you ignore that person. And we teach them divorce at six. We teach them divorce at eight. We have to be careful what we teach them because practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. Is this helping anybody? Because as soon as y'all want to go, I'm, I'm hungry. So as soon as y'all want to go. <laughs> Teaching your kids honor. We have four daughters. I want them to learn honor. I want them to experience honor. I won't even let my boys sit down to eat till they've been served. Pull a chair out for your sister. So that when she wants to go out one day, some guy, some idiot loser guy wants to try and ask her out. And he doesn't even open the door. He doesn't pull the chair out. She's like, my brothers treat me with more honor than you treat me with. A lot of women sell themselves short because they didn't grow up with honor. They didn't grow up experiencing honor. Make sure your children are in a relationship with the Lord, not just dating. Because love is manifested in giving. And now that I like you and you like me and now that I love you and you love me, if I cannot give you a ring and give you a date and give you a wedding, then I'm going to give you what I have, which is my body. Because love is manifested in giving. Love makes you give. That's why the Bible says do not awaken love until the appropriate time. So you've got to be careful what you allow those, your teenagers to do. I told my oldest son, I was like, you're, not, you're homeless. You are homeless. You have nothing. It's because of your mother we still let you live here. I sat my kids, I sat all of them down the other day. I was like, your mother is the only one I chose. I didn't choose any of y'all. And you've got to allow people in your life that can coach you and teach you. Because a lot of people date according to type and not purpose. Joy and I were talking to a young lady in our church. And she's like, well, he's just not my type. He's just not my type. I said, what do you mean type? What are you, like a type food? Like, what are you talking about type? How did you get a type? Like, I have a type food. My type food is like fried. <laughs> With like, you know, candy yams and fried okra and fried chicken and milk gravy and cornbread. Not Jiffy, cornbread and peach cobbler. That's my type. My purpose is salad. That's just salad, nothing on it, salad. 
Some of y'all got a type guy. My type guy is six foot four, tall, skin tone caramel. <laughs> but your purpose is like five, eight, 230 pounds. You gonna, you gonna miss your purpose running after your type. And six foot four and fine don't mean a thing at 40 if you ain't got no spine. The best is God bless you like Pastor Joanne with both. With both. I told her, I ain't always going to look this good. You got to take advantage of everything you can get now. This is leaving. <laughs> value your spouse. Value your children. I don't know what we're talking about. Prophesy over your children. Prophesy over your wife, over your husband. Speak blessing over them, not cursing. Speak blessing. Declare the word of God over them. For where God wants to take them and what God wants to do into their life. It's amazing. Steward your wife's calling. She's got a call and a purpose. My wife has a call and an anointing on her life. I have to help steward it. Pastor Joanne says if a woman can birth Jesus, a woman can preach Jesus. Make sure you take time to, you know, what are your family values? Have people in your life that, that, that can see things that, that you can't see. Learn to respect those people that are older than you, your parents that are older than you. If this was a picture frame and I got ready to hang it, I would look back at you guys and what would I say? I, I would ask you, if, if, is it straight? The reason I ask you, is it straight, is because I'm too close. I'm too close. And if you become intimate with that person before you're married, now you're like this. You're like, this is perfect. This is what I always wanted. And your mama's like, baby, it's upside down. You just don't want me to be happy. You're ruining my life. The Bible says, you can come play something for me. When the Bible says that God will give you the desires of your heart, it doesn't mean that he'll just give you whatever you want. It means he'll place in your heart the things that you should desire. And in this new year, in this new season, I would, I would encourage you now more than ever to say, God, place in me the things that, that I should desire. My kids, for Christmas, you know, they're, 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 they get these magazines you know, these Christmas toy books, you know, and, and they're circling. They, my little three-year-old, she circled a whole book. I'll just take, I'll just take this whole page, this whole, this whole thing. She's immature. Do we ever get to that point where we go to God and say, God, you, you bless me with what you want me to have? You know, it's a sign of immaturity to want everything you see. Rather than going to God and saying, God, you place in me the things that you want me to have this year. My daughter, Isabella, uh, we went to Disney. I don't know how long ago this was. It was a few years ago. And we're walking around Disney Springs, and there are all these little gift shops, you know. And so she finds this little Minnie Mouse ring. She sees this little Minnie Mouse ring. It was in November or something close to Christmas. And so she brings it up to me, and she's like, you know, can I have it? I don't know what it costs, like $150,000 or whatever Disney charges for stuff. And I'm like, uh, she goes, can I have it? And I was like, no, no, put it back. Don't touch anything. Because they're like, you know, they're like terrorists, you know? Like if one starts and they just, they just like, you know, so you have to like, no. And so we left, and so we got, a few stories down, and I told my wife, I said, I'm gonna, I said, you know, take them down. I'm going to go back and get that little ring for her. And so on Christmas morning, you know, she has this little ring box, and so she, she takes it, and she opens, she opens it up. And she saw this Minnie Mouse ring. And when she saw the, when she saw the ring, she dropped the ring and grabbed me. You see, I've learned that God will give you things as long as you're willing to drop it to grab him. As long as you say, God, I just want you. And whatever it is that, you know, we're running after and we're trying to obtain, we're trying to get, we're trying to do this and do that. And, 
you know, all these kind of things, I, I would just encourage you this year, be willing to drop whatever it is to say, God, I want you. You're the priority in my life. And I would encourage you just before we pray this, this year, 2021, say, God, I, I want to get healed in some areas in my life. I want my marriage. How many of you just want God to do a healing in your marriage? You just love God to just heal your marriage, heal your family. How many of you have someone that's a lost loved one? You know, you're like, God, just bring them to you. You know, just begin to prophesy and declare those things over your family. Begin to speak it in the spirit. Begin to, to get your children to pray and to declare it. God's going to do amazing things in your home and in your family this year. We're praying for our teenagers. You know, we're believing God. I'm like, God, help me. You know, only you. Only you can do it. But I just want to pray for you uh, tonight. And I just felt like the Lord wanted me to just speak to homes in 2021. Just encourage you to not let your soul get tired. But just go back to God. You know, the word says that Samson's strength was in his, in his hair. And I was, I was talking to the kids the other day, and I was like, what's the source of your strength? You ever ask yourself that? What's the source of your strength? You know, the Bible says joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And if I was Satan and I wanted to take your strength away, I would come after your joy. This year, don't let the enemy take your joy. Don't let the enemy rob you of it. Because you need your strength for your marriage. You need your strength for parenting. You need your strength for the plan and the purpose that God has for your life. If you hear your parent, would you just stand up? Let me pray for you real quick. If I turn this back over to your amazing pastors. I want to pray for all the parents. And Lord, we need it. Come on, amen. amen. So just lift your hand. Lord, right now, double and triple their sleep. <laughs> Rest their bodies and their minds. God, give them words to heal their homes. And minister to them even while they sleep. That you will not waste one third of their life. But when they wake up, they'll be full of fresh vision, ideas, creativity, wisdom, insight, revelation, and knowledge to how to lead the children that you have given them. I rebuke all spirit of failure off of them. That they have everything they need to win. And that you intentionally gave those children to them. We break generational curses. And we declare generational blessings over their home. We take authority over all nightmares that are coming after our children right now in the name of Jesus that they will be able to sleep and rest. Heal their bodies right now from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet and let the Holy Spirit be felt in their home. Let their children wake up in the morning and have had dreams and visions of what God wants to do in their life. Speak to them. And Lord, as we make it a priority to give you the end of our day, that we would have better mornings if we had better nights. Let us prioritize time with you, that we would have something to give because we spent time with you. I bless them tonight. I bless this entire church, city life, and the anointing that you have on this house. Father, take it to new heights. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, give God a big praise tonight. Thank you again for joining us for today's broadcast. Our prayer is that it ministered to you and it changed your life. If there's anything we can pray with you about or God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, please send us an email to info at citylifechurch.cc. 
We want to invite you to be our guest at one of our Sunday or Wednesday worship experiences. And you can find our times and locations on our website at citylifechurch.cc. You can also download our City Life Church app on your smartphones or tablets for more online messages. It was great having you with us today, and we'll see you next time.